channel. If you're new here, Lindsay Living is where I love to share all my best home decor advice from shopping tips, DIYs, room makeovers, and more. And today, I'm gonna to be walking you through the entire process of refreshing my rental kitchen space. I can't make any big changes since we're living in a rental, so today I'll be sharing budget-friendly DIYs that you can do to upgrade your kitchen on a budget. I'm hoping to level up the styling in here to match the family room behind me. And if you haven't seen that makeover, you're definitely gonna to wanna to check it out. All right, let's get into it. Here's the view of the kitchen from the family room. As you can see, this rental kitchen leaves a lot to be desired. We're going to try to style this so pretty that it distracts from anything that's not desirable. The first thing I wish I could change is these mismatched appliances. The next thing that I cannot change, would love to, are these countertops. We have this kind of formica. It's got some burn marks and things on it from previous tenants. There's a stripe down on the edge. Our countertops are pretty cluttered and I'm hoping to corral these items a little bit more. A lot of plants in and out of this kitchen. Every time we get a new plant, it always seems to have a temporary home in the kitchen before it finds its way otherwise in the home. On the island, we've got, again, a lot of plant clutter. Some really beautiful things, but I don't think are displayed to the possible best of their ability. I'm gonna go ahead and say it, Harvin Alano, we're done with Ray Dunn. From pots for plants to my stand mixer, I love to add cobalt as the one pop of color in this room. I'd love to keep these plates from our trip to France somehow in this room and I'm looking for the perfect place to rehang them. I picked up this beautiful handmade ceramic utensil crock at an art fair. It's not exactly the color story in here. It is in the blue family. We've got two dogs, so we definitely need to do something about their bowls. We like to keep them separated. And we were both thinking about raised wooden stands for the bowls. The first step in any home makeover is to clear the space. Usually we have tons of excess items scattered all around in our kitchen islands, on our countertops, things we don't use all the time, things that we could probably find an easy access point to stow away, especially if we take the time to organize and purge some items from our kitchen. Travis and I are definitely a little guilty of holding on to items that we don't need or use. Wish me luck. <laughs> nice to free up cabinet space in our pantry. Although we have a pretty large pantry and I could totally fit this in there right now. The other thing is it does add a little bit more style where I have limited options. Hmm. This is the quandary I'm always in. I usually kind of oscillate back and forth. Sometimes I display it, sometimes I put it away. Today, I think I'm gonna go ahead and try putting it away. And I think that'll help out with more counter space to devote to some of our beautiful plant friends. We've got some really cool ones. Look at this one. Excess clutter is definitely causing my brain to feel a little stressed. So I'm going to eliminate all of this visual clutter by clearing off this side of the refrigerator and all these magnets, notes, pictures. Mm -hmm. I think that died. best idea since I cleared off this side of the refrigerator I was able to move our little magnetic calendar that we use to keep track of each other's schedules from the front to the side so it'll create a much cleaner look on the front of the refrigerator you know this space I already feel calmer if you're like me and you have chrome appliances you might have the frustration of fingerprints and spots I think I found the best ever product for making these look as good as possible I am not sponsored by this company in any way I just wanted to share this with you in case you were having a similar cleaning frustration I've been using the Wyman stainless steel wipes they're just like wipes you might use for your kitchen 
the counters, but they're specifically coated with some sort of, I don't know what it is, miracle product. It's a little bit white in texture and color. Um, it comes off a little bit on your hands while you use it, but just wash your hands when you're done. It just makes it shine and takes me any fingerprints. Oh, it's magic. Don't forget to open your doors and clean between in the middle. Things do get in there from time to time. <laughs> One of my favorite ways to update any cabinet is to update the hardware. I was able to replace these old, boring, antique discolored looking fixtures with some bright brand new ones in brass finish. That's definitely been my finish of choice in this home. I also recommend matte black. I always put all the hardware I remove into a Ziploc bag marked with the name of the room. That way when we move out, we can easily reinstall the hardware before we leave and take our beautiful brass poles with us. Don't they look great? Hey guys, welcome back to day two of my kitchen makeover. I'm going to walk you through all the changes I was able to complete last night before going to bed, and we're going to start styling this countertop. We're going to do some organizing and purging perhaps of cabinets, spray painting projects, and figure out which plants get to stay living in this room. I've got a lot to get done. Let's get started. I've got totally clear countertops and it's so awesome to start with a clean, fresh slate. That way you can start layering in some of your decor pieces. I'm trying out something I already have, this Pottery Barn tray. We like room temperature water, so I'm debating what to do with that. I'm looking for a better way to house oil and vinegar, and I love this West Elm butter dish. I love displaying fresh produce in baskets, so I found this really cool long basket from Goodwill here in Seattle. I like how narrow and long it is, and it just displays things in a very natural and pretty way. Amber glass is always clean and simple. I love this bread box from Amazon layering in white cookbooks for a clean and fresh look and to inspire a little bit more cooking on my part since Travis does most of that in our home. I love to fill my home with mementos from my best trips and these plates collected at historical sites in France have found a beautiful home above my kitchen stove. I don't have to worry about taking care of them like I would a piece of art. They're easy to clean anytime. It's time to put together my kitchen coffee station and I'm starting with this home goods wooden tray, layering in our electric kettle, a new Bodum French press, and I'm giving this Ray Dunn coffee canister new life by turning it around. I really like the wooden top. terracotta pots black to continue with that accent of black and I did three pots with different plants in them so I'm going to go ahead and layer these here right above the sink area. Right now I feel like there's a lot in our cabinets that we're either not using at all, not using enough, or not using because we just don't remember where we put it. This is where we're putting our everyday mixing bowls. We use these every day. Why are they way over here? That doesn't make sense. Why don't we put them over there where they might fit a little better? We also have some big stewing pots in another cabinet down here I'll show you, and they could go over here. We hardly ever use those. You know what else is buried down here? <laughs> And hard to get to all the lids for all of our pans. This doesn't make a lot of sense. Think about zoning when you're organizing your kitchen. Things that you don't use as often can be in more infrequently grabbed locations. And then stuff that you use all the time and you need close to the stove, make sure that you put that in more of that cooking zone. This is the cabinet to the right of our stove. There's our everyday pans, which we use all the time, but then there's these giant pots. We don't use those all the time, so we don't need everyday access to them. Probably doesn't need to be in here. The toaster away. Oh my gosh, and it just barely fits. Oh, it's gonna be so convenient. Mixing bowls. Now it's all the stuff we use 
every day. Put some of our lesser used items, our largest stock pot blender, those can live in here. Got some covered Pyrex bowls for baking. This beautiful jadeite pie plate. Island has a lot of storage. One space saving hack is to put like things together, of course. I try to stack all my bowls together. I put all of our Cuisinart appliances in one little area. This is the, actually this one's a KitchenAid hand mixer. Another space saving tip is to flip the lids on your items so that you can stack them. These are my Le Creuset French ovens. I actually thrifted these at a local Goodwill store here in Seattle, and they are one of my all time best thrift finds. $30, and this one was $25. Just flip the lid and then you've got a flat surface and then you can lay your other item on top and then if it's still too tall to close then you can flip it that way. I also eliminated a couple items from the kitchen, just things from Travis and I moving in together, items that were redundant or just in disrepair or not really being used. That freed up some space too. It's 5 p.m. on day two. It's time to clear the clutter, put everything that I didn't use in styling away. I've got to get painting. When we first moved in a couple of years ago, I was lucky enough to find one of these plastic stools at my local Goodwill store. And when I told my mom about it, showed her a picture, she actually hunted it down, found out that it originally had come from Target, and she helped me find one that I could order so I could round out my set of two. The only thing I've never liked about these is the color. I love this basket for corralling plants that are in and out of our kitchen frequently, but I don't like the gray color. These little chair stools are darling, but it's definitely time for a makeover. I love the classic styling. They're very traditional, so simple. It almost lends itself to a little Scandinavian bent, which I'm really enjoying lately through my Pinterest scrolls. If you ever want to comb through my inspiration pictures, you can find me on Pinterest at Lindsay Living. I'll also link that down below in the description box. I'm going to give these chair stools a couple coats of black matte spray paint. I don't think I'm going to need to prime them since they're already painted and they are already a light color. Hi, Kelly. <laughs> While I'm at it, I'm also going to give this little metal basket tray a makeover as well. This one's from Creative Co-op. <laughs> Welcome to day three. I'm so excited. I could not resist checking on those new black stools first thing this morning when I woke up. Even before coffee, I ran out to the garage to check out the paint job and I am so excited about how it turned out. I was originally planning to paint them matte black, but I ran out of matte black paint on my last project. And since I am so impatient, I had to just get it done. I was just really excited to see them black and couldn't wait even one more day. Plus, of course, I've got to, you know, finish the YouTube video. So I went ahead and painted those chairs in gloss black. I had two cans of it. I think I'm going to swing by Target. Well, first I'm going to stop by Starbucks, get a Christmas related beverage. Then I'm going to swing by Target and see if I can find a new utensil crop. I think it's time for a little bit of a change. So I'm looking for something neutral. <laughs> distracted looking at holiday items but I was able to find some very cool pieces for the kitchen. First things first an oil and vinegar set that actually has a spout so let me show you this one from Hearth and Hand. 
This is a very small Target that I'm at here in the Seattle area and they have a very small hearth and hands section. I was so excited to find this oil and vinegar set. They're a little smaller than I was originally thinking but I'm loving the wooden base and I think this will actually look really pretty on our countertop. Checking out the kitchen accessories aisle and there's so many things to look at. I don't want to add any more words where unnecessary in my home so utensil crocks like this that say utensils to me seem a little redundant. This one's quite pretty. I believe it's from Threshold. $13 so great price. Nice texture. Very neutral. Just not really using gray in this room. Another gray option but nothing in beige. Ugh. So frustrating. I did use brass in the new holes and knobs. I was really kind of drawn to this one. I like that it's brass so it gives a little bit more to match with that. Threshold utensil holder, $13. This might be a good choice. The landlord installed paper towel holder under the cabinet. It's just not very aesthetically pleasing or in a good position. I'm trying to decide if this is worth $10 to me. I think it might be. I hate my old gray drying mat and I was looking to find a new one and of course they only have two colors and they're both gray. At least when we're not using it we can just stow it away under the sink. Welcome to day four of this makeover. You might remember this black metal tray. It had these little patches of rust, so it looked a little bit distressed, kind of farmhouse. I needed some more black elements to coordinate with the newly black stools, which I'll be bringing in in a minute. I really did like that weathered look with the rust peeking through. So I've got a little bit of sandpaper here. I'm gonna try to just lightly sand the black paint off of where I remember some of those little rust patches were and see if we can make this feel a little bit weathered. I really want to add more antique pieces to this room and have some plans to do some antique shopping coming up soon here on this channel. This is an easy way to make something feel like it's antique even though it was bought on Amazon. kitchen. This is actually a gift from my incredible mama. She's got such a great eye. This one came from Amazon and I'll make sure to link it below. down to the final stages in this room styling and one thing I've been really struggling to find are the perfect functional accessories for our kitchen. I am not loving this. I was lucky enough to find this super cute brass one at Target last night. It was only $10. I also picked up this very interesting little brass tool crock. Things like aesthetically pleasing oil and vinegar containers are surprisingly hard to find. I was lucky to find two beautiful glass bottles that perfectly match with the look that I'm going for in here. Unfortunately, I've really struggled with finding the perfect spouts for these. In my search though, I found this beautiful set from Hearth and Hand at Target. Got this beautiful natural wood base. This is only $12.99. The bottles are much smaller, but I really like the look of them. They got this beautiful little coppery looking spouts, and of course they fit because it all was purchased in one set. These do fit just barely inside of these bottles. I think I'm just gonna go with the Hearth and Hand set for now. We can always switch them out later if we want to. I love these bottles so much, so I'm definitely not ready to part with them yet. to try to style this so pretty that it distracts from anything that's not desirable.
That is what my heart says That's what my heart says I wanna be with you always You are my world in every place It's the things that you do And it's the smile on your face and I couldn't be happier with how these budget-friendly hacks turned out. It goes to show that you don't have to make huge sweeping changes or spend a fortune to make a big difference in your space. Whether you're renting or whether you own a home, kitchen makeovers can be hugely time-consuming and wildly expensive. So focus on the little things first. I use baskets all over my home, so of course I brought them into this makeover. We love houseplants and it's fun to sprinkle them throughout our home, especially here in the kitchen. It just brings a little bit more life to an otherwise possibly boring space. Through budget-friendly decor, styling, adding a little plant life, adding a little basket here and there, it really does make a big difference in making this space feel more cohesive. If you got value from today's video, make sure to hit the thumbs up. It helps small channels like mine to grow here on YouTube. And if you enjoyed what you saw today, you're gonna wanna hit that subscribe button and the notification bell. That way you'll get updated every time I post a new video. Thank you so, so much for watching. I hope you leave here with some new ideas to think creatively about your home. Until next time, I challenge you to make one meaningful change in your space this week, and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye, my friends.